Sex shouldn't hurt. If you're the one suffering from pain with sex or your partner's having a hard time with sex because of pain, it can put a real damper on your sex life. And what's even worse is so many of these people go from doctor to doctor without an explanation of why they're having pain or a treatment that works. I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and today I'm gonna go over the most common causes of pain with sex for women. If you are a man, please be sure to share this with your partner or any female you might know that is having difficulty having pain with sex. And if you want to learn about causes of pain with ejaculation or orgasm for men, please comment below and I'll make a video on that as well. The number one cause for pain with sex for women under 50 is vulvodynia. What exactly is vulvodynia? Well, it's pain that occurs with any sort of light touch to the vulva. The vulva is the outside of the vaginal canal, not the lips of the vagina, but inside that. I didn't include a picture because YouTube will probably make this video invisible to so many people if I do. So what are the different causes of vulvodynia? Well, there are many. They can include problems with your nerves, they can include problems with your muscles or your hormones or your genetics. And so there's lots of different causes of this problem, but fortunately there are treatments available. So the first thing is kind of conservative management, which all women can do. These are things that will help you feel more comfortable. So one is using cotton underwear because other fabrics can be irritating to the vulva. Also avoiding overwashing. So yes, you wanna wash it with lukewarm water. You can let soapy water run down, but you don't wanna do aggressive hygiene because that can cause dermatitis or dermatologic conditions to the vulva and irritation. You also wanna avoid very scented detergents or soaps because those can irritate the area as well. Lastly, you wanna make sure that you remove your bathing suit if you, after you go swimming right away. Sitting in a wet bathing suit for a long period of time can cause a lot of irritation, whether it's just regular old water or even chlorinated water. So other treatments for vulvodynia can include pelvic floor physical therapy or hormonal creams like estrogen and testosterone. These have actually been shown to decrease the sensitivity of the vulva to stimuli that are painful. There are also other types of things like injections, Botox, or other anti-inflammatory agents that can help with this pain as well as medications. You can also try using a lidocaine cream or any other cream like Emla that has lidocaine and prilocaine in it. These work to numb the vulva. And while it's not a treatment, it's more of a band-aid, it can really make a big difference. You can also look for delay sprays that are used typically for men. Those have the same ingredients like lidocaine, and prilocaine in them that can help with some of that discomfort. The next most common cause of pain with sex in women over 50 is called the genitourinary syndrome of menopause. And this affects over 50% of women who are undergoing menopause. And surprisingly, menopause symptoms or perimenopause symptoms can start as early as age 46. So what exactly is the genitourinary syndrome of menopause? Well, as you go through menopause, your hormone production, including your estrogen production and your testosterone production, decrease. And what happens? Well, when your estrogen production decreases, the pH of your vagina actually increases, and this causes a host of problems. It can cause thinning of the epithelium of the vagina, which results in vaginal dryness. And this in and of itself can cause pain with sex. If you have dry tissue down there, it's gonna cause some discomfort. Also, because the pH of the vagina increases, it actually causes you to be at higher risk for bladder infections or urinary tract infections because having a low pH is actually protective against bacteria that cause urinary tract infections. So other symptoms of the genitourinary syndrome of menopause can include, of course, vaginal dryness. It can cause burning or itching and occasionally some discharge or bleeding. And then on top of it, as I mentioned, you can have urinary tract infections more often when you're suffering from this problem. And sometimes you might just have symptoms like urinary urgency or frequency, meaning you're going to the bathroom more often or more urgently and you can't wait to get to the bathroom. What is the treatment for this? Well, the most common treatment is using a estrogen treatment in the vagina. This can be a cream, 
a suppository or a ring, and it's a very low dose of estrogen. So the side effects are extremely minimal. It's very different from the estrogen that you're prescribed to take orally. The systemic absorption is extremely low, which means that you don't get the concerns of breast tenderness, blood clots, breast cancer, or any of those things. In fact, I've linked some papers down below that show that there is really no risk of breast cancer or blood clots with the use of vaginal estrogen. So really everyone who wants to be on it because of their symptoms should be on it. Okay, another problem that occurs that causes pain is inadequate lubrication. It seems simple, right? But there's a lot of different causes of inadequate lubrication. It's not that the person that you're with is not exciting you. You may have some anxiety or fear about having intercourse. You may not have had adequate amount of foreplay, or you may have some history of sexual abuse or trauma that affects the ability to have normal lubrication. And lubricants are really readily available very cheap and come in a number of different formulations. And I'm actually gonna release a video on lubricants very soon, going over a whole bunch of different lubricants. And if there's something that you want me to look at, comment below and I'll look at that as well. But it's super easy. You can use water-based lubricants, silicone-based lubricants, or even go in your kitchen and look for coconut oil or olive oil and just use that. And it works great and it can help with pain for a lot of people. In fact, there's a lot of different things that can cause inadequate lubrication. These can include hormonal problems, or taking oral birth control pills that have estrogen and progestin in them that can actually cause some vaginal dryness and pain with sex. Also diabetes, other neurologic disorders, having previous history of chemotherapy or radiation, or several medications like antihistamines, anticholinergics that you might take for bladder symptoms. Those can also cause vaginal dryness. I will list a whole bunch of medications or things that can cause dryness and you just pause here and take a screenshot. The next most common thing that I see in my clinic is pelvic floor dysfunction or hypertonic pelvic floor muscles. I've described this before in another video and I'll link that up here, but essentially what it is is that your pelvic floor muscles are super, super tight and there's a number of different causes for it. It can be because of having a lot of stress or anxiety. It can be due to musculoskeletal problems like the way your body is aligned or even positional issues. So if you are positioned for a long time of sitting, in fact, I've seen a lot more pelvic floor dysfunction with COVID because people are at home sitting at their desks a lot more often. And so that can cause high tone in your pelvic floor muscles. And usually there are triggers. So you won't always have discomfort, but you might notice that if you have done a lot of sports activities, it can make it worse. Or if you recently had a baby, had a pregnancy or a delivery, that can make things worse as well. The treatment for this is primarily pelvic floor physical therapy. And what you do when you go to pelvic floor physical therapy is you actually learn how to relax these muscles and identify areas that are maybe trigger points and how you can actually assess these trigger points and relax them so you can have less pain. I've actually linked below a physical therapy locator that can help you find a physical therapist near you. Another cause of pelvic pain or pain with sex is pudendal neuralgia. And the pudendal nerve is a nerve that supplies a bunch of areas in the pelvic floor. And this can include the vagina, the clitoris, the perineum, and the buttocks. And all these areas can suffer if you have pudendal neuralgia. Now, what exactly is that? Well, that's kind of an inflammation of this nerve called the pudendal nerve. And it can be caused primarily by entrapment or inflammation of that nerve from things like prolonged sitting, cycling, horseback riding, or prior surgeries. And this particular pain can be very uncomfortable. It can feel like a burning, prickling, shooting sensation. It's often worse when sitting down and it can kind of wax and wane. So you might have more pain some days and less other days. You might also notice that you're having a little bit of increased sensitivity to pain. And that's where it's something as simple as putting on clothes can cause discomfort. And we think some of that occurs because of a central sensitization. So when you have chronic pain, your whole body can perceive normal stimuli as painful. And that's because our brain chemistry changes and it actually intercepts these normal things like rubbing your arm as painful. 
Treatments for this can include pelvic floor physical therapy, anti-inflammatory or neuropathic pain medications like gabapentin or Lyrica, or pudendal nerve blocks, so blocking the actual nerve to see if your pain gets better. Another cause that is rarely discussed is called clitoral adhesions. So the clitoris has a hood around it and around that hood, you can actually get adhesions that stick that skin above the clitoris, making it hard to retract. And so when you have those adhesions, they can become painful and cause pain in your clitoris. And you can feel that as pain with intercourse or pain that's there all the time. Also, if you've suffered any sort of female genital mutilation, this can result in different sorts of pelvic pain, depending on exactly what occurred. There are so, so many other causes, but common ones are infections of different kinds, urinary tract infections or sexually transmitted infections, dermatologic conditions where there might be skin changes that are causing pain. If you are postpartum, it's actually very, very common. When you look at the data up to 12 months after having a baby, somewhere between seven and 30% of women experience pelvic pain or pain with sex. If you have what's called a urethral diverticulum, this is a structural abnormality underneath the urethra that can cause pain with sex, dribbling, and recurrent bladder infections, or having pelvic surgery in the past, or having mesh placed in the vagina in the past, and having complications from that can cause pain as well. And lastly, there are a number of gynecologic abnormalities, including endometriosis, fibroids, ovarian pathologies that have been linked to pelvic pain. And so definitely see your gynecologist colleges to make sure you're not suffering from any of those. This was just a overview of all the causes of pain and really a public service announcement to you. If you are suffering or your partner is suffering, seek help. There is help out there. You don't have to suffer and you deserve a good sex life. As always, remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.